Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, classmates. Good afternoon, sir. I am tasked to discuss about the retirement under labor codes of the Philippines. So it is entitled Republic Act Number 7641. And um, I am tasked to read and report um, the contents of Republic Act Number 7641. So it is an act amending Article 287 of Presidential Decree Number 442 as amended, otherwise known as the Labor Code of the Philippines, by providing for retirement pay to qualified private sector employees in the absence of any retirement plan in the establishment. So basically, Section 1 says that Article 287 of Presidential Decree Number 442 as amended, otherwise known as the Labor Code of the Philippines, is hereby amended to read as follows. Article 287 on retirement. Any employee being be retired upon reaching the retirement age established in the collective bargaining agreement or other applicable employment contract. In case of retirement, the employee shall be entitled to receive such retirement benefits as they may be earned under existing laws and any collective bargaining agreement and other agreements, provided, however, that an employee's retirement benefits under any collective bargaining and other agreements shall not be less than those provided here. So in the absence of retirement plan or agreement providing for retirement benefits of employees, in the establishment, an employee upon reaching the age of 60 years or more, but not beyond 65 years, which is hereby declared the compulsory retirement age, has served, who has served at least five years in the establishment, may retire and shall be entitled to retirement pay, equivalent to at least one half month salary for every year of service. A fraction of at least six months being considered as one whole year. So let's remember this. Unless the parties provide for broader inclusion, the term one half month salary shall be 15 days plus one uh, twelfth of the 13 month pay. One twelfth of the 13 month pay and the cash equivalent of not more than five days of service incentive leaves. Retail service and agricultural establishments or operations employing not more than 10 employees or workers are exempted from the coverage of this profession. Violation of this profession is hereby declared unlawful and subject to the penal provisions provided under Article 288 of this code. So in Section 2, nothing in this act shall deprive any employee of the best benefit to which he be entitled under existing laws or uh, common policies or practices, company policies or practices. In Section 3, the, uh, this act shall take effect 15 days after its complete publication in the official gazette or in at least two national newspapers of general circulation, whichever comes earlier. So it was approved in December 9, 1992. So what are the rules implementing the new retirement law? So it was amended in April 1, 1993, pursuant to the provisions of Article 287 of the Labor Code, as amended by Republic Act Number 7641 in relation to Article 5 of the same code, Rule 2 of Group 6 of the Rules Implementing the Labor Code is hereby issued upon the full context of which shall read Rule 2 Retirement Benefits. So in Section 1, General Statement on Coverage, this rule shall apply to all employees in private sector regardless of their position, designation, or status, and irrespective of the method by which their wages are paid, except to those specifically exempted under Section 2, hereof, at least here in the term of Act, shall refer to Republic Act 
number 7641, which took effect on January 7, 1990. In section 2, exemptions to the rule, this rule shall not apply to the following employees. Employees of the national government and its political subdivisions, including government-owned or controlled corporations, if they are covered by the civil service law and its regulation. Domestic helpers and persons in the person, uh, personal services of another, and uh, which is related by the department order number 20, issued by Secretary Maria Nieves, our confessor, May 31, 1994. In 2.3, employees of retail services and agricultural establishment or operations regularly employing more than 10 employees is using this subsection. So in the first one, retail establishment means it is one principally engaged in the sale of goods to end users for personal or households. It shall lose its retail character qualified for exemption if it's engaged in both retail and wholesale of goods. Service establishment is one principal engaged in the sale of service to individuals for their own or household use and is generally recognized as such. And in the third, agricultural establishment operations refers to an employer which is engaged in agriculture. This term refers to all farming activities in all branches and includes, among others, the cultivation and foliage of the soil production, cultivation, growing and harvesting of any agricultural or horticultural commodities, dairy, uh, raising of livestock or poultry, the culture of fish and other aquatic products in farms or ponds in any activities performed by a farmer or in a farm as incident to, to or in conjunction with such farming operations that doesn't include the manufacturing or processing of sugar, coconut, ambaca, tobacco, pineapple, aquatic, or other farm products. Section 3 Retirement and CBA contract. As a contract. Any employee may retire or be retired by his employer upon reaching their retirement age, establishing a collective bargaining agreement, or other applicable employment contract or retirement plan subject. To the provisions of Section 5 here of on another payment of retirement benefits. In case of retirement under this section, the employee shall be entitled to receive such retirement benefits as he may have earned under existing laws and any collective bargaining agreement and other agreements provided. However, that an employee's retirement benefits under collective bargaining and other agreements shall not be less than provided under rule and provided further that if such benefits are less, the employer shall pay the difference between the amount due to the employee under his rule and that provided under the collective or individual agreement or retirement plan. And 3.3 states that where both the employer and employee contribute to a retirement fund in accordance with an individual or collective agreement or other applicable employment contract. The employer's total contribution thereto shall not be less than the total retirement benefits to which the employee would have been entitled had there been no such retirement fund. In case the employer's contribution is less than the retirement benefits provided under rule, the employer shall pay the deficiency. In section four, it's all about optional or compulsory retirement. Optional retirement in the absence of retirement plan or other applicable agreement providing for retirement benefits of employee in an establishment. An employee may retire upon reaching the age of 60 years or more if he has served for at least five years in the said establishment. Compulsory retirement where there is no such plan or agreement referred to in the immediately preceding subjection and employee shall be retired upon reaching the age of 65 years. Upon retirement of an employee, whether optional or compulsory, his services may be continued or extended 
on a case-to-case -case basis upon agreement of the employer and the employee. So uh, in the next one line, uh, service requirement, the minimum length of service in an establishment or with an employer of those five years required for entitlement to retirement fee shall include authorized absences and vacations, regular holidays, and mandatory fulfillment of a military or civic duty. In Section 5, Retirement Benefits, in the absence of an applicable agreement or retirement plan, an employee who retires pursuant to the act should be entitled to retirement pay equivalent to least one half month salary for every year of service, a fraction of at least six months being considered as one whole year. Next, components of one half month salary for the purpose of determining the minimum retirement pay due on an employee under his rule, the term one half month salary shall include the following. So it is the 15 day salary of an employee based on his latest salary rate. As used herein, the term salary includes all remunerations paid by an employer to his employee for his service uh, rendered during normal working days and hours. Whether such payments are fixed or ascertained on a time task piece of commission basis or other method of calculating the same includes the fair and reasonable value as determined by the Secretary of Labor and Employment of Food, Lodging, or other facilities customarily furnished by the employer to his employee. The term doesn't include cost of living, allowances, profit sharing, payments, and other non monetary other monetary benefits are not considered as part of integrated into the regular salary of the employee. Cash equivalent of not more than five days of service in the intent of leave, one twelfth of the 13 month pay due to the employee. All other benefits that the employer and employee may agree upon that should be included in the computation of the employee's retirement pay. One half month salary of employees who are paid by results. The covered workers who are paid by results and in a head fixed monthly rate, the basis for determination of the salary for fifteen days should be their average day salary. Subject to the provisions of Rule 7 A, Book 3 of the Rules Implementing of Labor Code and the Payment of Wages of Workers who are paid by results. The ADS is the average salary. For the last 12 months, reckoned from the day date of retirement, divided by the number of actual working days in the particular period. So, in Section 6, exemption from tax, the retirement pay provided in the Act may be exempted from tax if the requirement set by the Bureau of Internal Revenue under Section 2, Item 1 of Revenue Regulation Number. 12-86, dated August 1, 1986, and met to read. Pensions, retirement, and separation pay. Pensions, retirement, and separation, uh, separation pay constitute compensation subject to withholding except the following. Number one, retirement benefits received by officials and employees of private firms under a reasonable private benefit plan maintained by the employer if the following requirements are met. The benefit plan must be approved by the Bureau of Internal Revenue. The retiring official or employee must have been the service of same employer for at least 10 years and is not less than 50 years of age at time of retirement. The retiring official or employee shall not have service availed of the privilege under the uh, retirement benefit plan of the same or another employee. Penal provision, it shall be unlawful for any person or entity to circumvent or render ineffective the provisions of the act violations thereof. Shall be subject to the penal provisions uh, provided under Article 288 of the Labor Code of the Labor Code of the Philippines. In Section 8, Relation to Agreements and Regulation, nothing in this rule shall justify an employer from withdrawing or reducing any benefits, supplements, or payments as provided in existing law. Individuals or collective agreements or employment practices or policies. Section 8, 
relation to agreements and regulations, nothing in this rule shall justify an employer from withdrawing or reducing any benefit, supplement, or payments as provided in existing law. Individuals or collected agreements or employment practices or policies, all rules and regulations, policy, uh, policy issuances, or orders contrary to or to or inconsistent with these rules are hereby repealed or modified accordingly. And in Section 9, effectivity, this rule took effect in on January 7, 1993, when the Act went into force. So guidelines for effective implementation of RA 7641, the retirement pay law. Pay law. Uh, Republic Act number 7641 or the retirement pay law shall apply to all employees in the private sector regardless of their position, designation, or status, and irrespective of the method by which their wages are paid. They shall include part time employees, employees of service, and other job contractors and domestic helpers, or persons in the personal service or of another. The law doesn't cover employee of retail service and agricultural establishment or operations employing not more than 10 employees or workers and employees of national government and its political subdivisions, including government owned or controlled corporations. So they are covered by the civil service law and its regulations. The computation of retirement pay. A covered employee who retires uh, pursuant to RA 7641 shall be entitled to retirement pay equivalent to at least one and a half month salary for every year of service, a fraction of at least six months being considered as a whole year. The law excludes that one half month salary shall mean 15 days plus one twelfth of the 13th month pay and the cash equivalent of not more than five days service and cent of leaves unless the parties provide for broader inclusions Evidently, the law expanded the concept of one half month salary from the usual one month salary divided into two. In reckoning the length of service, the period of employment of the same employer before the effectivity date of the law on January 7, 1993, shall be included. For substitute retirement plan, qualified workers shall be entitled to retirement benefit under RA 7641. In the absence of any individual or collective agreement, a company or policy in practice, there is such an agreement, policy or practice, providing retirement to benefit which is equal or superior to that which is provided in the act. Said agreement, policy, or practice will prevail. As provided in RA 7742, a private employer shall have the option to treat the coverage of the public fund as a substitute retirement benefit for the employee concerned within the purview of the labor code as amended. Provided such option is in any way contravene an existing collect uh, collective bargaining agreement or other employment agreement. Thus, the public fund can be considered as a substitute retirement plan of the company for its employees, provided that such a scheme offers benefits which are more than equal to the benefits under. RA or Republic of 7641. The said scheme provides less than what the employee is entitled to under RA 7641. The employer is liable to pay the difference. If what employee and employer contribute to a retirement plan, only the employer's contribution is increment, shall be considered for full or uh, partial. Compliance with the benefit under Republic Act 7641. On the other hand, where the employee is the non contributor, contributor to the public fund, the employer being exempted from its coverage, the employer is under obligation to give his employee retirement benefit under the Act. So, this is my reference, and um, this the link, I will be announcing it later on. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Then I have my good vibes line again. Compromise is the best and cheaper is the lawyer. So talk it out with your enemies. Thank you very much and have a nice day.